Thank you very much to the panelists and Yoav who run it with an iron fist. And now it is a privilege for me to introduce Professor Marcel Mahlouf, who is an Israeli scientist. She's the Dean of the Faculty of Biotechnology and Food Engineering, and she is working on tissue and cancer working on the tissue for cancer treatment. She was born in 1963 in Casablanca in Morocco, and she came to, to Israel with her mother and grandmother then, and they lived in Ashdod, and she, after a year and a half in the technical school in the Air Force in Israel, she then continued her studies and she did her PhD in Beersheba at Ben Gurion University in biotechnological engineering faculty. And in 97, she went to Harvard to do her postdoc where she stayed for four years. In 2001, she was accepted to the Biotechnology and Food Engineering faculty at the Technion. She developed um, controlled release and sustained release systems for medication. She is an extraordinary woman, and we are delighted that you have joined us here at the Herzliya Conference. Thank you very much. Shalom, one and all, and thank you very much. First and foremost, thank you, Amos, who chose me to come and talk to you at the conference. Well, first of all, the entire panel just before me and before that were all men, so thank you very much for that honor. But I'm actually coming to frighten you a little bit, not too much. There's a different kind of terror that we've got to grapple with, and that terror is in and within our bodies but very differently from what we heard this moment that I also felt somewhat threatened and intimidated by, but we have developing new approaches. And I'm going to present to you, and from where I come and stem from, I come from a world of simplicity, not with a lot of money, and therefore one needs to plan things. You need a strategy. You need to focus the path in such a way that it should be scrutinized, because any mistake along the way costs money. And any mistake along the way is also a waste of time. When I actually came from the world of the academe and I moved into the technological medical world, unfortunately, I spent a lot of time with my mother in hospitals, and I wanted to be accepted for medicine, and I wasn't accepted, so I found a sort of way of overtaking that. And you'll see that actually what I'm going to talk about is an overtaking way for the development of technologies that were in the past were totally unbelievable that one could achieve. So now this is called the engineering, life engineering. My motto is what Anne Rind said, but no one will give me anything. I must take what I want, in simple words. A woman, perhaps, if you won't agree with every word that Ayn Rand, Rand said, but the question is not who will give me, the question is who's going to stop me. And she truly believed in one very important thing. She said, do what you want, and you will be a trailblazer. But if something doesn't seem logical in your eyes, so say that you don't believe it and try and solve it in a different way. And that's what she did. The world I'm going to talk about integrate in engineering and the world of life sciences. And it's connected to bombs, missiles, uh, rockets, strategy, how to decide what to do. And that is our approach exactly in science as well. Because our number one foe and enemy that we're talking about, and yes, uh, I was, we're talking about a bull target, sort of hitting the target, and, and an enemy for me that is cancer. And I have two problems, that's uh, cancer tumors, that's terror that we have to really fight against the entire time, and I do not believe that it will disappear from our medical landscape in the next few decades. But what I do believe is that we, we are wise enough to find strategies that will attack 
the cancerous tumor, tumors exactly where they are with a precise, with a precision missile that will hit the target exactly where we want to. Now, what we need in addition to doing that with the tumor, there are cells beside it that are good ones and there are also the, the bad ones. How do we hit that specific target, the carcinogenic one, and leave the healthy cells whole with their integrity? How do we find a focused missile that doesn't cost a lot of money? Because my mantra is do not waste money, do not spend the money, so we'll be able to develop it and make it accessible to all. That is the most important. We heard about private schools and private things. I personally believe in equal education for all. I do not like private schools. I do not like that kind of thing. Sorry, but I think that all science and medicine should be made accessible to all, and it doesn't matter whether he or she can pay for it all, but he or she must have the desire to invest and to make an effort, then they will be able to achieve it. So now, how many people have had relatives or people that they know who had cancer? How many of you here? That's usually what happens in most of my talks, that, I, that this isn't my target audience. Um, the topic necessarily that interests you, but I'm sure that this is something that I'm sure you'll all be interested in because it will show you some of the most positive aspects about our country. So we're talking about chemotherapy and radiotherapy operations and in case of cancer. What do they do? They have a detrimental effect on everything surrounding the tumors, the good tissues as well. So very often the patient recovers from the cancer, but they die because of others issues. So I want to find the right way to actually reach that tumor and solve the problem in a focused, pinpointed manner. So nothing is in one fell swoop, but I think the technology that I'm going to present will give us a strategic change, an essential one in cancer treatment. So when I talk about cancer, there are two things we ought to know. There is something called the accumulation of particles in the cancer tumor because the actual blood cells there are abnormal, and these blood cells are very po porous, or, and so everything permeates them, and therefore they develop doxine, for example, that medication, that drug. The patent, by the way, expired a year ago, and that was the paradigmatic change in, in chemotherapy because that medicine was in one minor particle, and because that particle was so small, it accumulated in the tumor. But what's the problem? There are other places where the blood cells are not exactly sort of ob obtuse, but they too are porous, and they can actually permeate them as well in the actual kidneys, and worse than everything, in the heart as well. So the person received the medication, but she could have died of a heart attack. So in other words, what you need to take is take something, ta connect it, bind a particle to it, and only deal with the actual cancer tumor. So the company developed Katsila, which is for breast cancer. And then what happened from breast cancer, the actual company, they invested $50 million in the development of that drug, and it was designated only for, blood, for breast cancer, and it succeeded only in 10% of those being treated. Now, why? If you look down at the bottom, what does it say? It cost $110,000 per course of treatment. What was the main problem? problem, they, they developed a drug for that particle that our immune system said, I don't recognize this. So the first time they gave that drug, it helped. The second time, the immune therapy, their immune, immune system immediately attacked that medication. So in other words, instead of 100% of that situation, we've only gone to 10% that reacted well. Well, it's excellent that they did actually 
receive it and react well. But look at the longevity that we have achieved from that. It was six months. It isn't a lot in our eyes, but for them it is a lot. But the solution must be different. So I would like to thank the government of Israel that chose this actual um, technology of those 50 trailblazing technologies. And I'm now signing a company with, um, with a tremendous investment, and we're going to reach clinical trials as well. But I'm going to go, I'm going to actually just skip over to something very focused. Each and every one of us in our bone marrow has one cell called a stem cell, a mesic one. And what is wonderful about it, that you can transfer it from a woman to a man, from man to a woman, doesn't matter to which gender, and that cell, cell is not rejected. Now, what's its connection to cancer? What it does is this stem cell knows how to home into a cancerous cell because it is going to help itself in order to fend itself from the immune system that it will be attacking it. So in other words, it is being called upon by the cancer and it will be surrounding that actually it's like basically pillar of defense. It is surrounding itself so that it, the immune system won't attack it in such a way that it will be protected. And that cell, that he's fam it's familiar with 95% of the cancer tumors in our bodies. It knows how to identify and we don't know how but it knows how to identify other cancer tumors in our body. So what I suggested is let's take that cell. We don't want it so it won't cause problems in the actual body. The FDA, by the way, did approve it. And you're, you sometimes get it as a treatment or preventative treatment against some kind of infection in Hadassah, in Europe. That's OK. But I said I want to take this stem cell, but I only want the element of it that actually identifies the cancer cancer cell, and the technology is based on how I empty it totally. Why do I want to empty it? I only want to leave what is on the membrane that identifies that actual tumor and turned it into a ghost. It now no longer can do what the cancer dictates to it, but what I dictate to it. It tells me what I did to you in the lab, that's what you're going to remember, and that's what you're going to do. So after I've turned it into a ghost, I then turned it into a nano ghost. Do you remember I said about those little things that reach everywhere? Now, if there isn't a tumor, then they won't, they won't identify it. Instead, they will be cleaned out of our body. So then I will take any medication that I want, and I will actually feed it to the patient. So if that particle reaches the tumor, it will then release that that drug inside, in other words, in a focus and pinpointed manner. In other words, I will be taking all my passengers on the bus and I will only drop them off on the, at their bus stop and I won't drop them off on the pavement surrounding it. So what I do, this is my nano ghost, my nano particles that we use, they are transparent, they are green. They are cancer cells, the red ones are the nanoghosts, and the moment I place them on the cancer, then the cancer no longer has a chance to survive. They go inside and they destroy them all through this drug. The moment they've permeated the actual cell, and then it can work. Now, this is a real t cancer tumor. We're talking about only rodents and sheep and other animals. We want to reach a stage of clinical trials. It's not people as yet. So let's say that there's a prostate, prostate cancer, and I've injected that into the actual blood system. Here, it has managed to reach my cancer tumor. This is only a part of that cancer growth. Crank cancer tumor, and this you cannot see with any other kind of drug. Usually a drug reaches it and manages to get in a little bit, but doesn't manage to penetrate the whole way. Now, what happens with our entire system? Because the cancer recognizes that membrane that I spoke about, they immediately think that it is a Trojan, a Trojan horse, that they are going to be the things that help them. 
And therefore, it actively lets them in because they think it's a Trojan War, so they're going to come in, isn't it? They don't realize it's a Trojan War. They just think that they're going to do some good. So in other words, again, the nanoparticles, the nano ghosts, know how to reach in a pinpointed manner and only they know how to reach the tumor. All the others don't succeed in doing so. So the red one is an animal that received one course of treatment and immediately there was an inhibition of the actual growth and the cancer spread, the metastasis. Now, how much does this cost me? The treatment is calculated as about $200 for a patient for six treatments, a course of treatment, we're talking about $50,000. So six rounds of treatment, $50,000, and that's also because the actual company wants to make a profit. How much would it really cost? About $2,500. In other words, affordable to any pocket, and that is lung cancer. It wasn't only for prostate cancer, because lung cancer is very difficult difficult with a lot of metastasis in the lungs. And you can see that from all this metastasis, we can see an eradication of the actual secondary deposit after one round of treatment. Now the question is, does this reach the brain as well? After all, we've got brain cancer as well. Now the green is a kind of blood barrier that actually prevents um, reaching it. So this is actually, this is a barrier. By the way, this is a real simulation. This isn't an illustration. We put it under our microscopes. And so you can have it our little, at our little dots that are our nano ghosts. And when they actually go through and permeate, they become red. And within five minutes, they've actually crossed over. It will reach the brain if the patient has a brain tumor. Will it reach the brain if the patient doesn't have a brain tumor? No. So after that we said let's deal with other מחלה <laughs> 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 <laughs>
replace it. So we built a system that simulates the body with the whole engineering and electricity. It's a laboratory that simulates our body temperature, fluids, gases, flu and so on. We raised, we grew the heart, we turned it into gel because the doctor said, Marcel, every time we're going to open up the, the, the chest and transplant the uh, substance, so we turned it into gel, we can inject it and it solidifies on the spot. I can turn it into a bandage as well and the doctor decide to make it the size of the heart and what I'll get in the end is cardiac tissue. And this is cardiac tissue we grew in the laboratory because the cells like this substance and it can become this. So I will conclude and go back to my nanoghost and my greatest thanks is of course, and let's admit the truth, our startup nation and I thank it here and I believe that biotech is tomorrow's high tech because with high tech, we've reached a kind of plateau. The Israeli brain are gifted students. What I did as a postdoctorate in Harvard, our doctorates are doing here. And you don't need a postdoctorate for that. They're very gifted students who are doing all this work. And to conclude, I hope that I have convinced you regarding the uh, approach of the nanograft, and I'll conclude with this, and thank you. Chemotherapy is like actually sending a rat um, out of one's body while burning the whole house down. What we want to do is only get to that rodent. So this is what we've discovered when we're talking about cancer tumors wanted. Although unfortunately, there are various phase um, tumors that we can actually attack. If only we could engineer some, in some kind of universal way, actually home in onto the actual tumor at various phases and find a whole sort of scope of, um, of medication that would only be released in such a way and in a pinpointed manner, we could do so so much more efficiently. Researchers from the Technion research, re discovered recently from the actually mesenchymale um, stem cells, we managed to find a way through their membrane we can actually help um, s um, protect them from their own immune systems. They enable the actual drug to really home in actually to only the tumor and not all the other cells around it. They developed a unique technology that would be able to empty their actual content and by decreasing the nano ghost, they actually create the, these and therefore deli um, deliver them in a focused manner to the actual tumor. By emptying them, these nano ghosts become actually carriers, but silent carriers that can slowly penetrate the actual patient's body in order to get a therapeutic, stable, long-term treatment. These nano ghosts preserve those stem cells to be able to reach the actual cancer cells and move around in the body until they actually come across one of those cells and only release then the drug that would eradicate and destroy that cancer. Um, and then they would be able to create the nano ghost as a kind of, if we manage to actually develop it, it will be one of the shelf products. Well, thank you very much. That was in brief, but that's the idea behind it. <laughs>